So hello guys, this is Sushant. So welcome to your channel that is Sci Engineers. We have already started uploading videos on different topics of your first year of engineering. Also people who are preparing for the JEE we will be uploading soon on different topics of physics and mathematics. So hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon just beside it to never miss a video from our channel. So keep liking and keep sharing our videos with your friends so that it inspires us to do more videos on different topics. So let's get going. So in this video we are going to discuss about one of the topics of your basic electrical engineering which is going to be the DC circuit analysis. In this we are going to discuss about the first topic which is going to be the KCL and KVL analysis. So you might be knowing your Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law from your 12th standard. So we are going to use that for our DC analysis. So you might recollect the laws that is your Kirchhoff's current law and Kirchhoff's voltage law which states that if you are discussing for your KCL that is Kirchhoff's current law. So you consider a node and the different currents which are coming towards it or going away from it. So if I say I1 is the current and I2 is the current which is coming towards it, I3, I4 and I5 are the current which are going away from it. Then by KCL your addition of all the currents which are coming towards it will be equal to the addition of all the currents which is going away from it. So you will be having I1 plus I2 is equal to I3 plus I4 plus I5. So that basically is my KCL. Going to the next one which is your KVL. So Kirchhoff's voltage law basically states that all the voltages which is present in a particular loop will be equal to zero. So those voltages can be due to the voltage sources or it can be due to the voltage drop across a resistor. Since we are dealing with DC circuits only, we are going to only deal with the sources that is the voltage source and the current source and the resistor. So for your KVL analysis, you need to understand four different types of different voltages which can be possible in a particular loop. The first two will be considering for a voltage source. So let us consider that this is my voltage source V which is present in a particular branch or a loop. So this is my positive end and this is my negative end. If in that particular loop I am going in this direction. So since you can see that there is a drop in the voltage, the direction. So if I go along with the direction you can see that I am going from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. So there is a drop in the voltage and that drop is given by minus V. So whenever you are encountering such a case then in that case you have to give a negative sign to that particular voltage. Now in the second case let us have the same voltage which is connected in that particular branch or loop and you are going in the opposite direction. So since you can see that it is going from the negative end to the positive end. So there is a rise in the potential. So you will be indicating this thing by a positive V. The next two cases is regarding your resistors. So let us consider this is my resistor R which is present in a circuit and there is a current I which is flowing through it. Now if in this particular resistor I am going across this resistor in this fashion. You have to understand that since current is flowing through the resistor in this fashion wherever it is entering that is going to be the positive end and wherever it is going to leave that is going to be the negative end. And since I am following in the same fashion if I am going in the same fashion as the current I have to indicate by a negative sign because I am leaving from a negative end. So it's going to be negative I into R because the voltage drop across a resistor is given by the product of the current and the resistance. Considering the same resistance and the same current direction as before but in this case I have reversed the way in which I am going through the loop. So in this case I have reversed the way in which I am going through the loop. 
So you can see that since again the potential is going to be positive and negative in this case and my direction is going from negative to positive. So basically if I am going opposite to the flow of current then in that case the drop will be a positive drop because I am going from a lower potential to a higher potential and the magnitude will be equal to the product of the current into the resistor. So these are the four different possibilities which you will be encountering while solving by KVL method. So let us consider this particular circuit given to me. Now whenever you are asked to solve it by KVL or KCL method then in that case what you have to do is you have to start naming the edges. So let us say that this is A, this is B. So once you have noted the different branches what you can do is you should go by the you should first consider the KCL equation. Let us consider that in this particular branch there is a current which is flowing as I2 and this current is going to be your I. So if you apply KCL at C what you will be getting is the current which is coming towards it will be equal to the addition of the current which is going away from it. So you will be getting your I is equal to I1 plus I2. Now what you can see is that one of the current is being represented by the other two currents. So basically only two variables are present in this particular case. So the, the variables can be considered as I1 and I2. So since you have two variables you have to have two equations to solve it. So you have to take two different loops while considering your KVL. So let us consider the loop which is A, B, C, D, E, F, A. So it's basically the outermost loop which I'm going to consider. So in this case you can consider any loop. There is no hard and fast rule that you have to consider only this type of loop. So when you're considering a loop you have to understand that that particular loop should not have any current source present in it. Because if there is a current source which is going to be present in that loop then you won't be able to find out the voltage drop across it. So you should not have any current source present in your loop. So taking this particular loop let us go from the branch that is A to B. So when you are going from A to B what you can see is that there is a rise in the potential. You are going from a negative end to the positive end of the battery so it's going to be plus 2 volts. Next it's going to be this particular resistance and since your current is also going in that particular direction because this I is the current which is flowing through this particular branch. So it's going to be a minus 0.1 into I but in my case my I is basically I1 plus I2. Now there is a 10 ohms which is also present. It's the same way. There is a current which is flowing in this way and I am going from B to C. So in that case it's going to be again a minus 10 into I which is going to give me a minus 10.1 into I1 plus I2. Going to the next branch which is C to D. Again you can see that there is a the direction in which I am going is along the direction of the current. So it's going to be minus 20. I2 which is the current which is flowing through 20 ohms. Next coming to this particular branch you are having a minus 0.2 I2 and from here it's going to be minus 4. There is nothing which is present along your EF and FA. So you will be ending this equation here itself which is equal to 0. So on solving you will be getting this particular equation. So selecting a different loop now. So let us consider KVL equation for the loop C, D, E, F, C. So if I am going from this particular loop then I will be having a minus 20 I2, a minus 0.2 I2, minus 4. I am going from E to F there is nothing so it is not going to have anything then I am going in this particular direction. Now since I am going opposite to the direction of the flow of current it is going to be a plus phi I1. 
this thing will be equated to 0. So on solving, I'll be getting this particular equation. And when you solve this 1 and 2 simultaneously, you will be getting the values of I1 and I2. Now what you can see is for I2, you're getting a negative sign for your current. So basically that is an indication that you had taken, you had assumed that the current was going from this direction. So actually the current is going in the opposite fashion. So the negative sign is just an indication that the direction is different and there is nothing wrong as such in your solving. So this was basically your KVL and KCL analysis. If you have understood these analysis, then the other analysis which will be following like the mesh analysis, the nodal analysis will be quite easy to understand because all the DC circuit analysis are based on your KVL and KCL methods only. So wrapping up with this particular video. So this is Sushant signing off from Samartha Vidya Engineering and Science classes. We take classes for BE, BTEC and 11th and 12th students. We also conduct classes for the engineering entrances. To inquire, you can email us at samarthavidya at the rate gmail.com or you can visit our Facebook page that is for samarthavidya. We also conduct private home tuitions. So you can inquire that on the same email address. So people who are new to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel and please hit the bell icon to never miss a video on our channel. Do let us know on what topic we should do more videos in the comment section below. So wrapping up with this video, so keep watching, keep learning and happy learning. Bye.